my people, my people, this is Ross Salwa, vulnerability, acceptance, and hope. So who is this guy? I hope some of you have guessed. Who is this guy? Well, this girl is Rosie. Probably the Rosie that you know, you've seen. I don't know what you know about her. <laughs> Probably from other people or from social media or from wherever. But this girl is this one. She was telling her own story. Childhood to class eight. So now, let's get to form one all the way to where we are right now. No more girl, let's talk about Rosie. And Rosie will tell our own story from the horse's mouth. Right, let's go. In all things, God works together for the good of those who love him and those that have been chosen according to his purpose. That scripture has become my anchor over time. Of course, you've heard that story and you know that all the episodes and all the stories we've been telling on this channel, we've been talking about me. Some of you know, others didn't. But yeah, let's go to form one. Finished uh, class eight, got 290. I can say I tried um, looking at the circumstances that where I was at. So it is time to go to form one, but I cannot go. Why? Because my parents cannot afford to go to form one. So what happened? Of course, from here forward, some of us have had this story, but some of us, it's completely a new story. So I, I am supposed to go to Form 1, but there is no school fees. And of course, I repeat again, in Kibera, or any form of Islam, depending on what Islam to you, there is three basic needs. Food, clothing, shelter. Remember, at age 13, I'm supposed to be someone's wife, coming from two religions. And at this time, there is only one religion that is at play. Now, um, I have my mom, my dad, and five of my siblings. So, is it going to high school or taking care of the siblings that come after me? Of course, school was not a priority. So, there's this lady that used to come to our house to do cleaning in Kibera, to do cleaning and help because we were too many. She would go home with 100 shillings per day. But that 100 shillings, because she came daily, calculated per month would be 300 shillings. Of course, in Kibera, schools are not that expensive. There was a high school that was started. It's called Kuruma Academy, Darajani. It's near the Daraja, those of us that know where Kibera is. The school fees then was 2,100 per month. I calculated and told my mom that I would want to go to that school and the thing that we needed to do is for her to release Caro, who used to work for us, and I will ensure and promise that I will do all the work in the house for me to go to school. My mom agreed, and it was a day. And that's how I joined Form 1 at Huruma Academy. While at school, I would wake up at 4 a.m. and go to bed at 12, ensuring that I've cleaned all clothes because five siblings, myself and my mom and dad, we were too many. So I would ensure that all work is done before I go. So while in school, I did not keep company of many people, particularly the girl child. I only had one friend who was a girl, but she did not really get to know who I was really is, because I wanted them to, to hide myself. I want to assume that at that point, I was struggling with my identity. I was struggling to understand whether I was a house girl, a student, a mother, or I, I didn't really know who I was. My identity was really mixed up. So 
I wanted at least people to know me, to know who I was. So I joined a group of bad boys. Please take note, this one I have no one to blame. It was my personal choice. So I joined a group of bad boys. So I would carry their bag. I was always walking with a backpack. Their alcohol, Mary Kay, wines and spirits. Some people would say divine amaroro. So I was their carry. But because, by nature, because of uh, loss of esteem, I was very quiet and polite girl. No teacher would ever suspect my bad behavior. I would even throw a stone in a classroom and everybody would be beaten except me because they thought that I am this good guy who can do no one harm. In school, I did my best to ensure that at least because I hated poverty and of course Soma kwa bidi, hili, uwe mtu wa maana maisha. That was my philosophy. I wanted to study hard so that I get a good job and rescue at least my family from, from poverty. While in Form 4, uh, actually from 1 or through, from 2 or through to Form 4, I was among the top 4 students in that school. Then in Form 4, I got pregnant. 27th of September, uh, 27th of September, yes, 2007, something happened. I was raped. I have a mark on my face from the blow I got from that person. I'm here. If you can see it on that camera, well and good. If you cannot, when we meet, ask me. Anyway, um, this person, it's somebody that was very close to me and to my family. It's somebody that was known. And that sexual violence, that sexual abuse, sexual assault, sexual harassment, changed everything about me from then moving forward uh, my parents knew about it uh, my relatives knew about it the people that were around me that time knew about it but apparently none of them believed me apart from my bad boys the company I kept those are the only people that believed in me. Their own reason they have, of course, because I keep a company of boys, maybe, probably, yeah. So anyway, um, out of it, I conceived. Yeah, out of it, I conceived. And, uh, you know, when it rains, to coerce, rape, and conceiving at the same time. Never mind that uh, in primary school, <laughs> I was accused of having a sexual affair, and I had conceived and aborted in my small village. So this one was real, rape and conceiving. So my boys, introduced me to smoking weed. Weed is marijuana, bang, to, at least to try and keep me sane. Uh, this is 2007, I'm supposed to be in Form 4, or I was in Form 4. So I did exams while pregnant. My neighbors in Kibera knew that I was pregnant. Not only that, they knew how I got pregnant. The stigma was too much, we could not continue to live in that environment. So we moved towns. We went to a different town. 